Hey guys, welcome back. So I recently published a video on this generator made by Max Speeding Rods. It is a 5,000 watt inverter generator which can surge up to 5,500 watts. In that video, I covered the unboxing, went over the features, and then started the break-in process of the engine. Well, the break-in process is just about done, so I thought I'd turn the camera back on, we'll do the final oil change, and then resume with testing. I plan on measuring the sound level output, the quality of the power output, and then I'm going to load test it. We'll bring it up to the max of 5,000 watts, and then push it a bit beyond, see if it can keep running. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. I wasn't originally planning on showing the oil change process, but I'm pretty impressed with the way this system works. If you've ever changed the oil on an inverter generator, you know it's a messy process, but so far I haven't spilt a drop with this one. You should definitely stick this up in case the cap comes off for some reason. You're not going to lose all your oil. And that's it. It takes exactly a quart of oil, so it makes the whole process real easy. I saved the oil from each oil change while breaking the engine in, and each one represents just over an hour of runtime, and you can see the difference. The oil on the top, you cannot see the bottom at all. The one in the middle, you can just see it a little bit. And then of course, the most recent oil change looks the best. And if you mix it around, you can definitely see there's a lot of metallic in this oil and a couple specks of metal. You know, this one looks a lot better, but still metallic-y. And of course, this one looks near perfect. So yeah, it's definitely important to break in an engine. You don't want to leave that metallic oil in the engine because you're actually going to do damage to the engine if you keep running it with that in it. We'll start easy. I'm going to check the sound output at various loads. We'll start with no load, 1500 watts, 3000 watts, and then 4000 watts. But one thing to keep in mind, which I don't think a lot of people know, is that on a 240 volt generator, it is divided into two circuits of 120 volts, leg one and leg two. So the most you can get out of one of those circuits is half the rated load, in this case, 2,500 watts. I double checked the 120 volt outlet and both the hut terminals, they are connected electrically. So that tells me that the most I can get out of here is 2,500 watts. I double checked here and that is separate. So that's where you get half your power and the other half at 120 volts. In my case, I'm plugged into the 240 volt outlet and I have a breakout cord. So that's gonna give me access to 2,500 watts on one leg and 2,500 watts on the other leg, totaling 5,000 watts.
From 23 feet away, we're just over 54 decibels. At 1500 watts, we're at 59 decibels. At 3000 watts, just over 62 decibels. just at 70 decibels at a 4,000 watt load. And for comparison, my voice is about 75 decibels while speaking. Next, we'll test the power quality of the generator. Most non-inverter generators put out total harmonic distortion up to 25%, and anything over 5% is considered bad and could damage sensitive electronics. Utilities to your house usually provide clean power, less than 5% total harmonic distortion. This right here is just a view of the sine wave from the utility power on my house, and you can see it looks pretty good. You know, it's not perfect. There is some distortion on the top and bottom. And if I zoom out, you can see the wave isn't completely smooth when it rounds the corner. So I'm expecting the inverter generator to look at least as good as the utility. Most likely it's gonna be better. So let's try it out. Hopefully you can see this okay. But right now we're at no load and you can see the quality of the power, it is better than what's being delivered to my house. So let's add 1500 watts. And everything is stable. Let's add another 1500. We're now at 3000 watts. Still looks good. Let's add another 1000. And that output is rock solid. So I'd say that's a pass. I know the generator can handle 4,000 watts, but I haven't tried 5,000 yet. So that's what I'm gonna do now. That is the max rated load. So I'm gonna turn on each of the space heaters on the ends up to 1,500 watts each which will bring it to 3,000 watts. And then I'll put the space heaters in the middle on medium, which will be 1,000 watts each, bringing the total load to 5,000 watts. And if things stay well, meaning the generator doesn't overload, we'll try bringing those middle space heaters up to high, one at a time, while keeping an eye on that overload light. Handling a full load without issue. According to the meter on the generator, it's at 119.8 volts, exactly 60 hertz. So let's bump it up and exceed the rated load a bit and see what happens.
And as expected, after exceeding the load, the power shut off after about 10 seconds. So I'm gonna turn off the space heaters. We'll hit the reset button to get things back on. This generator did a good job. It passed every test I threw at it. It's making clean, quiet power. It can pull 5,000 watts without issue as advertised. And even when overloading it, the engine did not sound like it was out of power. It was handling that load without issue. So a little bit of extra horsepower is never a bad thing. So if you wanna find out more about this generator, I'll leave that down in the description. And I wanted to thank Max Speeding Rods for giving me a chance to review their generator. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.